battles begin to break out. Somebody say battles. Battles. Now, now there are many battles. First, there are battles that take place in the heavens. And uh, the word of God, Jesus said, I beheld Satan when he was cast out like lightning out of heaven. Uh, Revelation says uh, that there was war in heaven. The devil and his angels fought against God and his angels, and the devil was cast out of heaven. But if you notice, there are no wars in hell. Mm. Uh, there was only one war that I know of, and that is when Jesus himself, the word of God says, who is it he that ascended, but he first descended into the lower parts of the earth. And he went and let the devil know that I am the daddy of this house. And he went there in front of all his generals and all his demons and imps and principalities and powers and let him know I'm in control. Somebody say amen. amen. Don't get it twisted. If you do anything, it is by my power. Now let my people go. Somebody amen. say amen. That's the only war that I see in hell because it's ran by a tyrant. The devil is a man. You know he's a tyrant. He runs a tight ship. He doesn't care. And you see certain tyrants that happens in the earth. There are battles that take place in the earth too. Now most of the battles that you fight, you got to get in the ring. Somebody say amen. amen. Now I heard some folks preach just don't get in the ring, but 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 and that then sometimes the Lord fights that battle, but most of the time you got to get in the ring. Because the Lord ain't gonna raise no spoiled children. Somebody say amen. amen. He's gonna make you get in the ring. He's gonna make you fight. He's gonna make you come out with a bloody nose and some hurt knuckles. You're gonna feel the pain of battle. But our battle is not carnal. We don't fight with guns. I hope we don't fight well, with guns. Well. And we don't fight with knives. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't have no 22 and I don't have no diligence hidden somewhere. Amen. Because the word of God says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty. What? Through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Yeah, Jehoshaphat, the only problem with Jehoshaphat, that he got into the wrong battle. See, in chapter 18, he was dealing with Ahab. He just went to visit Ahab, a man, a friend of his. But Ahab, being the slickster that he was, said, won't you go with me to the battle, a man, Ramoth and Gilead? And, uh, and Jehoshaphat, well, I might as well go on to go with you. You know, you my people are my people. But you got to be careful who you get hooked up with. Because of the battle that he messed with, not only did he have to fight one, he had to fight three because he fought the wrong battle. Look at somebody say, just stay home, man. Just stay just home. home. Somebody just say, stay just, home. Stay home. just stay home. You need to just stay home. Uh, that's what it's like when you are pastoring a church. You got to watch who you are tangling with. Because some folks want you to go with them. Because I can't go with you. The Lord told me to stay home because you ain't quite walking with God now. I can't take all my folk and bring them with you. I got to stay home. Look at somebody say stay home. Stay home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jehoshaphat goes in a battle amen and now he's got to deal with some folk. But thank God for the revelation. Somebody say revelation. The revelation, amen, because the man of God let Jehoshaphat know you should not have gone. And Jehoshaphat, being a man of God, thank God for the prophet. Come on now, I know we don't like some prophets in these days, but you got to thank God. Somebody say, thank God for the prophet. Thank God for the prophet. I know some of us have prophets, amen, in our church, and they want to prophesy, and they want to, amen, they, they want to go here and there in the church and give somebody a word from the Lord. you got to sit them down. Amen. And say, well, if you got a word from the Lord, tell me something. Amen. Because I don't need it. That's shepherd and Jack. That ain't where. Amen. That ain't prophet. And you trying to shepherd. Uh, amen. Uh, somebody say amen. Yeah. yeah. But the prophet of God let him know. I, I, I 
I wrote down, I said, when the revelation comes, there are only one of two things you must do. You must believe it or you must leave it. Somebody say, believe it, believe it. or leave it. Believe it. You must believe it or you must leave it. Somebody knows what it's like to receive a revelation from God. Some folks, I mean, all the pastors up in here somewhere received a revelation to go and pastor, amen, a church. And that's why I know 28 years ago when the Lord told you to go pastor a church, it was not easy. Because I'm sure there was somebody in your old house that was pulling your coat tail trying to say well stay here don't go but there is a call of God somebody say the call of God I don't know if anyone understands what it's like to go out and pastor a church to step out on God's word and not knowing what's going to happen and I stepping out on nothing but God can take nothing and bring it in to something somebody say amen amen uh, uh, this word, amen, is for somebody, amen. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. See, the word of God says, it says, but, but as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear has heard, neither has it entered into the heart of a man, the things which God has prepared for him that love him, but God has revealed them unto us, unto us. Somebody say unto me. Unto Somebody me. is mine. Is mine. Yeah, by his spirit. For the spirit goes in and searches all things. Somebody say all things. All Yea, things. the deep things of God. So you want to thank God for the revelation. Well, amen, Jehoshaphat had a revelation, but, but however, amen, there is the expectation. Uh, somebody say expectation. Now, at any time you are walking with God, uh, there will always be great expectation. Uh, whenever you are stepping out on the word, uh, you got to be expecting something great. Uh, when you step out on God's word, uh, you are expecting God to move uh, from miraculous and the divine. Uh, there are some folks that got some children right now who are not walking with God, uh, but you are stepping out on God's word uh, with great expectation uh, and you are crying out say Lord uh, somehow or another you got to bring my baby home uh, so I say amen uh, oh and I know there's love even you were dealing with some PKs I, I was a PK my own self amen amen my father was a preacher in the Baptist church uh, but still pressure is still pressure somebody say pressure Pressure. And you feel the pressure of people pulling you and telling you because you are a PK, a preacher's kid. You got to pray for the people of God because someone is trying to bring, somebody says trying to bring them down. Trying to bring them down. Uh, what expectation? Well, God, a man uses bad things for your good. Hey man, you gotta understand that God can use the death of something to bring life. Yeah. You must realize that God can take something bad and bring good out of it. Why? Because God says, I am, and there is none else. And I can take every bad thing that you have, and I can wrap it up, amen, into something good. So that by the time you it's all over, you can say it was good that I was afflicted. I thank God for the death. I thank God that it happened. I thank God for the infirmities. I thank God for my weaknesses. I thank God for the test. Thank God for the trial. Because when I was weak, now am I strong. Somebody give God a hand praise. And say thank God for the trial. Come on, say thank God for the trial. You got to thank God for every trial, every beat down. Because when you was weak, fear so I say amen. amen. She, Jehoshaphat, responds with a shepherd's heart. He, he began to tell the folks to fast and, and to pray. You must understand that there are some battles that you cannot fight. There are some battles and storms that you cannot 
not fight. The apostles, amen, when they were disciples, the Lord told them to go to the other side. And there was a storm. They were experienced fishermen. But there was a storm that came up that they could not fight. Uh, amen. And the Lord had to help them out. You know, there are some storms uh, and there are some battles that you, uh, amen, can uh, not fight. Uh, that's why I said this battle uh, belongs to God. Uh, somebody say amen. amen. Yeah. This battle, amen, belongs to God. Uh, hallelujah. You must realize, uh, amen, that God, amen, uh, is working with you in the storm. Uh, I want to ask you, what storms are you going through in your life? Amen. Amen. What fights are you in right now? What is tearing you up on the inside? What's making you fight? Is it your Facebook friend? I don't know what it is. Is it your friend that you're hanging around, but something is tracking you down that you cannot sleep? in the middle of the night. You realize that there are some storms that will make you toss and turn in the middle of the night and say, Lord, if you don't move, hallelujah, I'm going to just about lose my mind. Somebody say amen. amen. Yeah. But Jehoshaphat began to fast and he began to pray. Do I have some praying folk in the house? Uh -huh. Now somebody next to you and say fast. Yeah, now somebody say pray. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody say push. push. That means pray, pray. until pray. something happens. Yeah, yeah. say pray, pray until something happens. Until so. uh, look at somebody else next here and say push. push. Yeah, get real. Say push, girl. Push, push, push. push, push. push. You got to push. You got to push. You got to push that thing. Amen. Every woman knows what it's like to. Amen. Amen. Any woman that has birthed anything up in this house knows what it's like to push. Somebody say amen. amen. Everyone appreciates every child that she has. Because no men don't understand the cost of the children. We can sit by the bed and hold the hand, but only the woman got to push. Somebody say push. Only women can understand what it's like to push. That's why I thank God for the women preachers because they got to push a little bit harder than the men folk. It ain't so easy because everybody's saying, well, what she called and then the Lord call her. But yeah, you'll know it because the word of God, apostle means a sick one. And you'll know it because of the amen, because of the anointing that has upon a man, the woman of God with signs and with wonders. But every woman knows what it's like to push something up out of you. You appreciate God for every child that you had. Because you felt the pain. And you had to put your foot up on the stirrups. And the doctor said push. And you didn't have no strength. But you found way down deep in you. You had to bring the beat. You had to get ugly. Cause I got a man child or a woman child I got to push out Every woman that had a baby Somebody say yeah, yeah. Every woman that had a child Just say yeah, yeah. Oh come on now Every woman that had a child That had to get ugly Just say yeah Yeah, yeah that's the war cry Because you must realize <laughs> You got to push In the kingdom of oh, God too Somebody say push. You are pastoring a church. You got to push. Every man of God up here knows what it's like. In the middle of the night, want to give up. Throw in the towel. Take the Bible. I don't want to throw it down, but I got to set it aside. And maybe God didn't call me. And maybe I'm not the pastor type. And what am I here for? But no doubt in the middle of the night, the Lord will speak to you like he spoke to Paul. And say, stay the course, finish the race. I called you, amen, and I chose you, and I have anointed you. Can't nobody take your place, can't nobody else be called. You are the one. And I look at yourself and say, I'm the one. I'm the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is expectation. Come on, see expectation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, let me.
me gone and see how the book of Psalms says, I will bless the Lord when? At all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. See, the power of expectation is the ability to see the promise when you can't grasp the promise. See, you can't always grasp the promise of God. You are standing there. You know God sent you. You know you're out, amen, on angels' wings. You can't yet grasp it. You see it. Anybody ever know what it's like to see the promise, but you can't grasp it yet? You can't pull it in. You see it. It's not like playing football. Because I'm playing football. Come in, brother. I'm not. If I'm playing football, as I'm playing offense, amen, then I can push you up out of the way. If I'm playing defense, I can grab you, pull you aside, amen, and swim you up out the way. But when I'm in the word of God, that devil is going to come and push me back. It's going to push me back. And I got to learn with all my power and all my might, I got to push. Somebody say push. Yeah. Somebody give God praise. Somebody say push. Push, 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 push. Now you got to realize I'm from the country now. And my mom is 80 and 8 years old. And she grew up in the I mean, BE days before electricity. And they didn't have no power so And they got 60 acres of land. And it was a forest. And they said the trees were this far apart. They had to saw the trees down. Chop down every tree just to get some kind of crop. And they said before they went off to school, they had to drag gallons of water from the pond, which was a half a mile away, and drag it up to the house. When they came home, they had to cut the wood. Now it took two folks, because one person was on a saw on this side, and the other person was on a saw on that side. They had to go just like this. So teamwork had to be. That's why I said you got to push. Act like you from the country. Say push. 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 You got to push that thing out of you. Hey, there's some folks here don't want to be saved. But you can't be saved unless you begin. Somebody say push. Push. Well, that's the expectation. But uh, last thing I want to give you is uh, the exaltation. Now, now the exaltation happens uh, when the realization uh, of the revelation comes to pass. Uh, Jehoshaphat said, well, Lord, uh, see, because he went into the wrong battle, uh, he picked up three battles. Uh, but he began to fast and to pray. Uh, and the prophet, the son of Asa, uh, Asa was a prophet and uh, a songster, a musician. Uh, you see him in the book of Psalms. Uh, uh, somebody say amen. amen. Uh, well, the prophet began to prophesy. Uh, once he prophesied, uh, he said this battle belongs to God. Uh, uh, look at somebody say this Battle belongs to God. That's why he began to say, he said, you ain't even got to fight in the battle. All you got to do is praise my name. Let's talk about the power of praise. See, you ain't got to fight. All you got to do is praise the Lord. I know there were different praises. Told on all those different ones. But they began to sing the Hallel. And so when Jehoshaphat began to tell the men of God, he said, well, let me begin to consult with the folk. Because I'm finding out that if I just let the folk know what I want to do, I believe they'll get with me. You realize one thing. 
that as they stood right there, the men didn't stand alone. They had their wives and their children. You got to get the whole house. Do some folks only want to give the house the man? But you got to come on, brother. Amen. But you got to get the whole house. Some folks all they want to do is get one part. But you got to get the whole house. See, you can't go into a battle. Just fight the right flank and fight the left flank. You got to get the whole thing. Ah, somebody say amen. amen. It ain't like a peach. If one part of the peach is rotten, cut that piece out and keep on eating it. But if one apple though can make the whole thing rotten, that's why I said this battle belongs to God. And so Jehoshaphat began to set his me in a ring. He didn't have to fight. He didn't pick up a knife. He didn't pick up a gun. He didn't pick up a rifle. He didn't pick up no spear. But all he picked up was a praise from the Lord. Do I have any praises in the house? Somebody get here. And so they began to set the praises in a ring. And they began to sing huh, the Hallel. Huh, one Psalms 118. Huh, but they went even further than that. Huh, Psalms 136 huh, is the great Hallel. Huh, that's the great praise. Huh, I want to do a house of praises. Huh, somebody come on and praise it.